<laughs> Hello, everyone. Sorry. <laughs> um, I just wanted to um, address a little topic by way of review before you take the quiz today. Um, of one set of readings that we didn't get to. Um, remember in our lesson or two on early Christianity, we took this text-based approach. We did some analysis. We talked about the Q source hypothesis in terms of the development of the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, um, and how it is likely that these early Gospels were constructed. But we have to also remember that in terms of what we know about the earliest forms of Christianity, they're more represented by the letters, the epistles that were written between various early Christian communities. Virtually all of the epistles were written before any of the, the Gospels, those narratives of the life of Jesus, those sort of biographies were written down. So it's from the epistles that we kind of get a sense of what earliest Christian belief looked like. Um, there's one letter that is written by probably the, the most prolific of these writers, that is the Apostle Paul. So they're called Pauline writings. Um, this is excerpted in the Christian text um, a document that's uploaded into Canvas. Um, um, Paul was a, 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 a legal scholar within the Jewish tradition. Um, he knew the Torah, um, what Christians would call the Old Testament, the first five books of the Old Testament. Uh, he knew the Torah very well. Um, and in fact, he was an ardent, in, in ardent opposition to the early Christian movement when it emerged. He has a conversion experience uh, and he becomes an advocate for Christianity. In particular, he has he's an advocate for um, spreading Christianity to a non-Jewish audience. So when we look at his letters, his letters are often referred to as, as things like Philippians or Romans or Ephesians or Galatians or Corinthians. Uh, these are basically to, to cities within the either the Greek or Latin-speaking world, outside of a Jewish context, um, and um, uh, to non-Jewish audiences, or to audiences that are may have a core of Jewish believers, um, but have spread beyond that initial core into a Gentile audience. We talked about the difference between... Um, uh, Jews and Gentiles uh, last time. Uh, one of those letters of note is his letter to a small congregation in the Greek city of Philippi. And I thought I would bring that to your attention. There's two excerpts in the texts here from that particular reading uh, that I would, would like to draw to your attention. And I'll take you through this very briefly. Um, First of all, um, in, in a part of it, he says down here, this sort of talks about himself. Um, he says, if anyone has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Um, that means, what he means by uh, confident in the flesh is sort of uh, the works that he does, the things that he does, his actions, uh, his ability to follow the tenets of Jewish law. Uh, he even says that he is a Pharisee. The Pharisaic sect was one that was um, very attuned to ensuring that they followed all the all the rules, not just the Ten Commandments, but all the Levitical law codes and everything. Um, so uh, those are sort of the works of righteousness. Um, Paul will go on to essentially reject that. Um, but he says, uh, if anyone has confidence in the flesh, I have more, circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, a tr uh, the, the tribe of Benjamin, Hebrew of Hebrews, as to the law of Pharisee, as to a zeal, a persecutor of the church, the early Christians, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. And then he goes on to say that he regards all of that as rubbish, as, as garbage, as trash. 
um, because he he finds that that sort of um, the doing of righteousness, the works that people do, really only ends in failure, and that he shifts um, what in the Judeo-Christian understanding of, of what makes one right with God, a.k.a. righteousness, uh, is this issue of faith, okay? Belief. It's what you believe rather than what you do. And now there's a relationship to it. So what Paul's really doing is he's, he was reorienting um, the, the sort of belief in the God of Abraham more towards the faith side of things than onto uh, a works. He says he calls it the righteousness of God based on faith. Okay, so that's one thing of note uh, in Paul's epistles, and that we find throughout his writings as a very consistent ideology. The other thing that's very interesting here is that um, it's in an earlier part of the same letter. Uh, he's writing to this community that probably is very uh, fractured. They don't get along with each other. Uh, we have to read between the lines a little bit. He says, um, make my joy complete. Be of the same mind, having the same love, being in, um, in full accord and of one mind. So it sounds like maybe they're not so much all in one accord or of the same mind. Um, he says, do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Um, so, so there's a little indication that maybe not all is well in this particular church. And then he goes on. And he says, let the mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. And then we notice that the text changes from what is a traditional way of, in which we write prose narrative, or in this case, an exhortation to do something, to a more poetic structure. And this is done both by editors, but it's, it's done because it's taking the lead from, from scholars who believe that what Paul is doing right in this section here is he's quoting something. He's quoting either a verse of early Christian poetry, what one might call a hymn. And if we look closely at what that hymn says, it refers to Jesus as he who, though he was in the very form of God, did not equality, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on the cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's a, a kind of long. Um, in English, it doesn't sound like it's very poetic, but what most scholars believe is this is actually a very early form of the Christian creed that Paul had heard, that he's not composing himself, but that he had heard somewhere in his travels uh, around the Eastern Mediterranean world, and that he inserts into this text here as a reminder, almost as a reminder to something that these people have already heard themselves. Um, what is striking about that is if Paul is writing the, this to the letter, this letter to the Philippians, uh, in, let's say, the 40s of the Common Era, um, this has already been in circulation enough to come to his attention. So this is l largely a statement of belief that would have occurred within, I'd say, probably about a decade of the, of the events of the crucifixion resurrection in, in Christian thought. So it's... <clears throat> When one tries to say, well, what did er the earliest Christians believe? Did that change over time? Um, is there this, uh, this transformation from Jesus into a, uh, a teacher person, into the Son of God? It, there's an indication that if that sort of transformation did happen, it happened very, very quickly. Um, that there is a sense already equating Jesus with the divine, with God himself, um, quite early on in, in the Christian message.
So, so two little pieces here from uh, Paul's, uh, from some of the epistles. Um, and then, of course, there is an excerpt in here from the book of Revelation. We talk of, talked about apocalyptic writings, the end of the world, and so forth. Um, but that's not as of keen interest at this particular time. I just did want to address these issues of, of some of the epistolary writings uh, before you take your quiz. Alrighty, um, that's all. Um, good luck on the quiz. Take a little bit of time beforehand to look over your notes, and um, you'll get that done, and then there'll be a reading assignment for the weekend, um, which will be um, in Islam, okay, in, in the textbook there. All right, thanks very much, folks. Bye-bye.